Hello, my name is Rudy Moni. I want to tell you a little bit about myself and uh, my story. I was born in Jersey City, New Jersey in 1959, 57 years old now. I attended St. Paul of the Cross School. I was an altar boy there and I played music in the church. And I went out onto the streets and did sports and music as well. Not long after, when I was 16 years old, I'd been drinking and drugging. I went to Hudson Catholic High School for boys. I further went on to more education at Jersey City State College, where I earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in Media Arts, specializing in television in 1982. I went to work on the docks uh, in, uh, on uh, Bayonne and Jersey City border. It is the container ship terminal, where I was a maintenance manager of the chassis and containers. I went back to school to learn to be a broadcast engineer and got a certificate in that area. Uh, and I got married not long afterwards to a girl I had dated for five years. I went to work at the American Banknote Company, making holograms. I went on to the United States Army in their advanced display team developing flat panel displays. In 1984, I moved to the Jersey Shore. In 1987, I was diagnosed with bipolar illness and I went to a rehab for 30 days. Uh, I got out of the rehab. I continued to drink and drug for 13 years. They had given me an Alcoholics Anonymous big book there. I read it for 13 years, not thinking it was me before I realized it was me. And in 2001, I got clean. I've been clean now for 16 years. I got divorced after three years of being clean. I met another woman. I married her. She had three children from a previous marriage. We now have two grandchildren. And I went on to uh, earn a certificate in the area of recovery, support, practicing. And lately, in the last six months or so, I began working on at two hospitals as a peer support associate, Trinitas Regional Medical Center in Elizabeth, New Jersey, and Jersey Shore University Medical Center in Neptune, New Jersey. In my work as a certified recovery support practitioner, there are a few best practice tools that I have developed that I would like to share. The first is a spiral bound notebook. And here is how it works. In the top in the middle, I put the date, 1-24-17. In the top left, I put the day of the week, which is Wednesday, and underneath that, where I was located, which was at the Trinitas Hospital. In the column on the left, I put the time and next to it what I was doing. Here at 8 a.m., I was attending the on-site rounds meeting where we discuss what is going on in the unit. At 9 a.m., I transported Mary C. from her home to the TLC, Treatment, Linkage, and Case Management Facility, for her medication injection. At 10 a.m., I met with the peer specialist partner to discuss the Friendly Visits program where we are starting to do more intensive outreach work. At 11 a.m., I facilitated the relationships with self and others group. On the far right, I have minimized the to-do list to say do. Here are two items. Schedule live an active life for a healthy mind training, and then later on, meet with the inpatient staff for lunch. This kind of tool is invaluable to be able to go back and see a place in time what exactly was going on. Here is another best practice tool that I use to help me that I share with the patients I work with. It is an easy, simple way to track the taking of your medication as prescribed. On the top of the page is my name and date. I divide the page into two sides. On the left are the day and time of the week. Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Monday morning, Monday evening, Tuesday morning, Tuesday evening, and so on. On the right-hand side 
are the dosages. In the morning I take five pills, in the evening I take four pills. So the way it works is, as I take my medication, I just check it off. Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Monday morning, Monday evening, Tuesday morning, Tuesday evening, throughout the week. In addition to my weekly prescriptions, I also take vitamin D and magnesium. Using this simple tool makes certain that I take my medications as prescribed. This last best practice that I have developed is what I call the recovery timeline. Here's how this one works. First, I have this big black line here, which is the year. Going up, there's some ages listed, and then there's these three red symbols, which are denoting manic episodes. Here, this line is when I was clean and versus using drugs. This green line is when I started taking psychotropic medications, and this top line is where I call self-medicating, which denotes when I was taking the psychotropic medications in addition to drinking and drugging. So here's how it goes moving along. It was 1959 I was born. I was clean for 16 years till 1975, where I started a 12-year period where I started to have a manic episode in 1987, and I was prescribed psychotropic medications, and I used them in addition to drinking and drugging, and that's why I call it the self-medicating period, which was 14 years. In 2001, I had another manic episode, but I stopped using, and I was clean for 16 years leading up to now. But even though I was clean, I still had a manic episode when I was 45 years old in 2004, which was kind of confusing to me. But after a while, going back and looking at it carefully and discussing it with my support team, including my psych psychiatrist and my therapist, my family members, I've become more to understand that even without using and not staying on the proper medication and stresses in my life, can trigger a manic episode. And by the grace of God, moving forward, I've been clean and sober for the past 16 years, and life's never been better. Another tool that I use in my work is uh, in a spirituality nature is transcendental meditation. I was taught the technique back in the mid-90s I did it for a few years, then I fell away from it, but about six or so years ago, I picked it up again, and uh, 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes in the early evening, I closed my eyes, uh, let thoughts come and go, say my mantra, and it really helps calm me and uh, gets me to connect to my creative self that I use throughout the days and nights to help myself and others. The goal of this video was to share some information about myself as a certified recovery support practitioner and what is going on in the field of mentally ill people and substance abuse people and how to help them. I like to share this information from the angles of experience, strength, and hope. My experience is that I have been dealing with bipolar illness for 30 years. I drank and drugged for 25 years, and I have been clean for 16. My strength is in my family and the programs that are available. My hope is that I can make each day better than the day before for myself and others. Continue down the road to recovery.